questions. And can I just say to whoever is running the audio, if I could just get a clip of Richard saying idiotic retard, that would really... <laughs> I've been cell phone ring for so long. <laughs> Idiotic retard. <laughs> Yesterday in the Mahalatan world, hundreds of millions of people found their backsides about two feet further away from Mecca than the tips of their nose. Now we know that in the world, at least 7% of humanity have no time for religion. They're not born with it, I'm one of them. I'm sure there's lots of others here. But out in the countries such as Iran, how many of those people who had their nose to the ground in that vulgar demonstration of obeisance to Allah were thinking, oh no, here we go again. I hope that we could maybe help these people, and we do owe it to them. We're in, free, in the free West here, where we can say what we like. But there is a tradition of skepticism in the Middle East, in Persia, which is slowly but surely being choked. Now, the, we have Aaron Raw with us today, and his Expositions on science, on reason, have had a tremendous effect in the English-speaking world. And I believe, I don't think I'm lying when I say that the people our side in the YouTube's war are actually on mopping up operations now. Reason has won that battle. But what my idea was, and maybe this is a mini page to Professor Dawkins, read the foundation, is that we can take these YouTube videos, which have been so useful to us, speaking English, and I know that they're translated into French and German and other languages, but could we start subtitling them, or maybe voiceovering in Persian, in Farsi, and sending them out on the YouTube again, so that they can get a whole new audience and communicate our ideas. People who are ready to receive them, I'm quite sure. They are much safer now because there is the Tor system on, on, uh, on the internet where you can Google Tor and what they will do is they will give you an IP address that appears that if you're in Tehran, that you're actually in Bern or Los Angeles, or, or, or Dublin. So they won't be caught by the authorities. And I think we have a, an excellent opportunity here to, commute, to communicate our views to a, an audience that we really shouldn't neglect because they are our friends and colleagues. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for that suggestion, and I will, I will certainly look into the possibility of doing that. It's the kind of thing that my foundation might very well love to do. Thank you. Brilliant idea. Uh, this is my first atheist event. I usually go to skeptics events when I see uh, Rebecca and Professor Dawkins. And at those events, a common question that, that we ask is, do we have to be skeptical? Is, is it appropriate to be a skeptic about everything, including religion, or can we leave that bit out? Because for pragmatic reasons, discussing homeopathy and all these other things, you, you, you don't want to offend people by bringing up religion. Obviously, that's not a concern here, where the atheism is the whole point. Um, but I was thinking about, does it work the other way? For instance, when you're talking to somebody and you're, you're discussing their religion, should you leave the skepticism about other things aside, or can you say, your lucky rabbit's foot isn't helping either? <laughs> you know? Well, I mean, speaking as someone who was, um, who's probably a bit, been a bit more active on the skeptic circuit than on the atheist circuit, I do usually come from a position of skepticism, and I try to encourage skepticism as a tool amongst atheists as well. 
Um, there are some very prominent atheists um, who aren't necessarily skeptics. Um, Bill Maher springs to mind as a U.S. Uh, broadcaster um, who made a really great movie you might have heard of, Religious, but he also, he's an atheist and he's an outspoken atheist, but he also believes that vaccines cause autism, that science-based medicine is wrong, um, that we should only use alternative medicine. So, you know, I, I, I certainly am a big fan of continuing, you know, I, I feel like skepticism is just a tool and uh, everyone here has presumably applied that tool to their religious beliefs and come to the conclusion that they're, they're atheists. Um, I, I do encourage everyone to continue applying that tool to the other areas of your life because we can continue to make the world a more rational place in other ways. I'd, I'd like to address that too. Isn't it? <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty sure that in the movie Religious, that Bill Maher actually said that he was not an atheist. I'm pretty sure he said he was an agnostic. And there's another problem. Uh, I gave a speech to the uh, atheist community of Austin not long ago where I was talking about the difference between atheism and agnosticism. And one of the reasons that so many atheists in the world, like me, did not realize they were atheists was because of that stigma of supposedly knowing that there was no God. No reasonable person takes that stance. Indeed, Carl Sagan, who many of us revere as one of the leading atheists of our time, he did not call himself an atheist. He denied that title because he said that an atheist knows a great deal more than I do. But it's only because he was a victim of the society much the same way that I was. I was led to believe a falsehood my entire life. It was misdefined. And if you are not convinced that a God exists, then you are atheist. If you do, and, and it's perfectly reasonable to be an agnostic atheist. You don't believe that a God exists, and you say that there's no way that we could know if a God existed or not, what its properties are. That's the agnosticism. It's a choice between whether you know or whether you don't know. I prefer to not to say that I know what I don't know. But neither do I possess a conviction in the existence of a God, because I'm not all about atheism. Atheism is a conclusion that I've reached because I am about empirical rationalism, about not stating what I can't verify. If, it's one thing to say that you believe something. Okay, fine. But when you start stating it as fact, then I want you to back it up. And if you can't back it up, most societies, I think, would call that a lie. <laughs> And that's the position I have to be in. Simply being honest in my inquiry about the world has inevitably led me to atheism. And I think if your perspective is like mine, where you don't make allowances for certain beliefs, you will end up atheist also. <laughs> if you actually have uh, come across a person in your skeptics reading who has a rabbit's foot, and uh, thinks it's lucky. It's not lucky for one rabbit. <laughs> and you might ask them also, how would they feel if a rabbit was carrying around their foot? <laughs> just twist it, see what happens. Just play with their mind. Uh, ju and just because you're at a skeptics meeting does not mean you have to turn off the atheist label. If you want to point out idiocy, not an idiot, an Id idiocy, do so. Don't turn off the atheist label just because you're in a meeting or a conference that is not, quote, atheism. Can you hear me? Yeah. I think the thrust of the question was that in the skeptics movement, the deep skeptical inquirer and so on, um, there's a kind of uh, taboo among at least certain members that you mustn't attack religion. And I, I met this when the skeptical inquirer movement, um, uh, what were they called, Psychop, um, honored me, gave, gave me some kind of an honor and I, my acceptance speech was an attack on religion, and I was roundly castigated for this, um, um, possibly because it might have affected fundraising. I, I, I don't know what the reason might have been. Um, but it seems to me to be a nonsense. Um, the the, def the defense offered is that religion is fine as long as it doesn't step on science's toes. Religion always steps on science's toes. Religion postulates miracles. 
uh, virgin birth, right, raising people from the dead, walking on water. Um, this is all anti-scientific, and if you remove the miracles from, from religion, you've got nothing left that any uh, congregation would be, would be swayed by. So I don't see any need or reason to separate uh, skepticism about uh, whatever, you know, dowsing and telepathy and things from skepticism about gods. This is all skepticism and we all should be in the same boat. I just want to add one thing. I know, there's, I know there's a lot of questions, not to keep banging on about the whole feminism thing, but the, I, the same complaints I've heard about um, marrying skepticism and atheism. Oh, you'll, tr you'll scare away the religious donors. I've also heard whenever I speak up about feminism, oh, you'll, you'll scare away the conservative donors. I hear it every single time, and my response is always, I don't need them. They don't think I have the same rights that they do. Screw them. <laughs>